Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is case 114 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. Similar to case 113, this case describes a challenging DK crash case. The patient had a distal left main as well as disease in the circumflex and the LAD and was turned down for coronary bypass and was referred for percutaneous coronary intervention. These are different views, demonstrating there is also some disease into the proximal LAD with calcification. There is also significant tortuosity into the circumflex. What is the best PCI strategy? This is a Medina 111 bifurcation, and uh, therefore there is significant risk of losing the side branch, which is the circumflex in this case. Therefore, an upfront two stent strategy is needed. So the side branch, the circumflex is significant. The likelihood of occlusion is high given the significant uh, osteal disease. And therefore, a planned two stent strategy is needed. The angulation here is less than 70. Therefore, the DK crush or culotte can be used. The technique we use in our lab for such cases is um, in most time the DK crush technique. So how to perform this? As for any bifurcation technique, the first step is to wire both vessels. The LAD was quite easy to wire with a workhorse wire, but the circumflex was challenging and the workhorse wire was not successful. One option here would be to use a microcatheter and help support the guide wire. Another option is to use a different type of wire, such as a polymer jacketed wire. This is a Xeon Black that successfully navigated through the tortuous circumflex and then a loop formed and successfully advanced to the distal vessel without selecting any of the side branches. So here we are, both vessels are wired. The next step is to perform imaging and predilatation. Imaging was done in the LAD, uh, demonstrating that uh, there was calcification, but it wasn't severe to need a thorectomy. The vessel was about three millimeters uh, in diameter. And then the left main, the vessel was large, about four millimeters in diameter. Also, IVUS was done into the circumflex, demonstrating very small size, two millimeters distally. But as we moved more proximally, the vessel grew a little bit. There was some calcium, but not severe. And then uh, the diameter was about two and a half uh, in the proximal vessel. Both vessels were predilated, and now we are ready to start with the 17 steps of the double kissing crust technique. The first step is to insert a balloon into the main vessel and then a stent into the side branch. The side branch was the circumflex, so here we have the stent into the circumflex protruding 2 to 3 millimeters into the left main. We do have a balloon to perform the crush after the side branch stent is deployed. So this was successfully done. The, the balloon of the stand was removed. And then there is something at the distal edge of the stand. So it's important before crushing the side branch stand to make sure that the result is adequate. So here this was of concern. We did give nitroglycerin to see if it was spasm, but there remained a lesion which likely represented the distal edge dissection. That is why we decided to cover it. We placed a small 2.0 by 15 millimeter drug diluting stand that uh, successfully covered the lesion and provided a nice result into the circumflex. The next step is to crush the side branch stand that was done by inflating the balloon that was into the LAD. And then to rewire into the side branch, we like to jail the side branch wire that can help as a marker about where to wire with the uh, new guide wire. Uh, wiring was uh, challenging, but eventually it was successful. We typically try to use a workhorse wire initially, and if it doesn't work, we switch for a polymer jacketed wire. The problem started here. The next step is to advance a balloon to the side branch, but the balloon would not go. We tried to push the guide in a little more, get a little better support, but once again, we did have significant difficulty. We could not advance um, uh, the balloon to the side branch. So what to do? There are different ways to do this. One is to use smaller balloons. The other one is to use a microcatheter to advance to the strength stretch or increase the support, for example, a guide extension or using a side branch anchoring technique. Another option is to exchange for a more supportive wire, such as a wiggle wire. 
In this case, we did use a Sapphire 1.0. That's the smallest, the lowest profile balloon available currently in the US. And that successfully made it through the struts of the crust stand. Then we upsized to a 2.0 millimeter balloon that um, also had a hard time going, but we actually inflated it. And after we inflated it and deflated it, then it could be advanced into the circumflex. And eventually we were able to insert the 2.0 millimeter balloon and did the first uh, kissing balloon inflation between the lady and um, the circumflex. The next step is to advance the stand into the main vessel, but we had once again difficulty. We had not prepared the vessel very well. So what do we do? We can uh, upsize the guide, but that's not a good idea to lose our wire position, change the wire, uh, prepare the, the vessel more, which is what was done here, use different, more deliverable stand, or do other techniques such as deep breath or using Viper Glide or Rotor Glide. We performed additional balloon angioplasty of the LAD, and we were then able to successfully advance the stand into the LAD and back in the left main. We positioned the stand, making sure we um, covered the lesion. It turns out that uh, there was um, slightly, the stand was slightly short, and that's one of the disadvantages of not using an automated pullback. Otherwise, we would be able to more accurately judge uh, the length of the stand and would have saved uh, uh, one stand. So we deployed the stand and then placed an additional stand at the distal edge of the LAD stand. The next step is to perform the proximal optimization technique. This is critical to facilitate rewiring into the side branch. Otherwise, the wire might go under the stand struts of the main vessel stand and then deform the stand when the balloons are being inflated. So the balloon was inflated. That was a 4.0 millimeter balloon. Then the side branch was rewired. Most people don't like to jail the wire, but in this case, we did jail it, and it does help us determine which direction to go. And then we were eventually able, after manipulation, to advance a second wire that tracked along the first guide wire. We then removed the jailed wire. And then now it's time to perform the second kissing balloon inflation. This time, the balloon went in very easily. And then we did the two-step kiss, which involves first a high-pressure inflation in the side branch to fully open the struts of the stand. And then um, having the simultaneous inflation in both the main vessel and to the side branch. We then did another proximal optimization technique to ensure that the proximal vessel was in excellent quality. And then a final angiogram and intravascular imaging to confirm a nice result. This is the final IVUS of the circumflex, showing that there is a good result with a good stand expansion all the way into the left main. And this is the final result into the LAD. There was also a good result with good stand expansion and stand strata position coming all the way back to the left main. So in summary, the DK crash, at least in my opinion, remains the preferred technique for treating complex left main bifurcations, such as the Medina 1-1 bifurcation in this case. It does, however, require a systematic approach. It does have several steps, 17 to be accurate, and each step needs to be done sequentially and methodically to ensure a good result. After stents are placed, it is important to ensure that a good result has been achieved. In this case, we had issues after placing both stents. The stent in the circumflex was complicated by the distal edge dissection, requiring another stent. The LAD stent, there was residual disease, also requiring another stent. The two key difficulties with DK crash have to do with rewiring the side branch and uh, crossing into the side branch with balloons and uh, other equipment. And to achieve this, there can be different techniques, for example, using different wires or a microcatheter, or using smaller balloons and then sequentially sizing them up until delivery into the side branch can be achieved. Thank you very much.